Aloha, and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Byron Riddle, and we are broadcasting live from Think Tech Studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. You may also subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list at that site as well. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. Our guests share with us their journey to building a successful business right here at home. And with us today is Brianna Grosh of International Marketplace. Aloha and thank you for having me down here today. I'm so excited to share with you uh, what we've been doing since we've opened three years ago and kind of talk about our future at International Marketplace. Well, that's a great, um, but let's go back a little bit and let's start with you. Why don't you tell Sounds us some, some stuff about you, Brianna? Yeah, well, currently, um, for the past two months, I'm the new general manager of International Marketplace. I'm so honored and privileged to have this position. Congratulations. I started, thank you, I started at the center three and a half years ago myself, actually on the construction team. Um, so uh, overseeing some of our um, our construction cleaning, as well as some of our cultural elements, um, installing our statues, working with the local artists, uh, to make sure that we were placing these statues uh, on property appropriately and to, to their best wishes. Um, so just a whole, and then also in between that, went to marketing. Um, so ops, creative, marketing, and then back to ops again. So I'm just so fortunate that I've had this um, a long career, if you will. I mean, it's been three and a half years, but um, this career with the center, and I've seen it grow from the ground up. And, and it's such a wonderful story to tell the past, to the present, uh, and to the future. So let's back up a little further. Mm -hmm. What brought you to Hawaii initially? Yeah, so it was through work. Mm -hmm. um, ironically, I have a degree in human biology. Uh, I was pre-med. Uh, one of my first jobs on island uh, was um, before I went in my field, I was working as a waitress. Mm -hmm. um, loved it. It's one of my favorite jobs I've ever had. Um, I was working on, um, on Ala Moana Boulevard at Goofy's Restaurant. It's like a small 13-top food to... Um, a farm to table type restaurant. Nice. It was so much fun. Um, but I was waiting to get my kind of career here started and the first job was a medical device sales rep. Um, so I was doing that, still kind of in the healthcare, decided not to go to med school. Um, and just meeting all the people that I met here and the, all the different industries people were in. Um, I love tourism, I love connection uh, and meeting people and, and also sharing the stories that I've learned um, you know, uh, in Hawaii, living in Hawaii. And I wanted to perpetuate that forward. Um, so that's kind of how I started getting associated um, uh, with tourism by way of Bennett Group, a local PR firm and strategic communications firm. Mm -hmm. uh, again, was just had um, was fortunate that I had a breadth of clients in all different industries, um, and just able to see what they were doing and kind of that that started again. Like, hmm, I'm going to go explore this further. And then, so I, like I said, I started with Bennett Group, and then I knew I wanted to go in house with a company, and I decided to go with International Marketplace. So. When you were on property, then you were actually with Topman. Yes, I was. Yeah, okay. and Bennett Group did have the International Marketplace account, uh, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of a little, um, like, think, kind, I, kind of looked at it a little bit. I think that's how I met you originally. Was yeah. at one of Michael Finley's uh, event, talking events. And yeah, I think yeah, that's he was our former met, general right, manager, right. and um, but yeah, it's just been you know I was at with Bennett Group. You know, we did the PR, and we were uh, we oversaw. A topping off ceremony, so placing the last piece of steel on the center. My name is signed on it. Oh, um, awesome. So it's just, you know, personally and professionally, my Hawaii career uh, is tied to the center. That's fantastic. Yeah. Let's go back a little bit. Let's, let's, let's cover some of the origins of the international marketplace mm -hmm. and come up to where we are today. So if yeah. you would. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, as you know, since 1957, the center has just been this attraction and destination for Kama Aina and visitors to come shop, eat and dine and, you know, take a load off. You know, we all have, you know, maybe stressful days or whatnot. And it's like just we wanted we wanted it to always be a really fun place that everyone was welcomed um, over time. You know, some places need a little TLC. And so the Queen Emma Land Company, who is the landowner of the property, decided to choose the Taubin Company, mm -hmm. which is now um, it's the company I work for. And they chose us to renovate and reimagine the center to what it is today. And we uh, reopened the center in August 2016. And I think what's so important um, is all those stories of the past. We worked with a lot of the cultural advisors, cultural, um, even some of the descendants, um, and just a lot of, you know, our company knew what we didn't know. And, you know, we know how to build centers, but there's such a history here in Hawaii, and especially of the property, that we needed to understand, learn. And, you know, uh, a lot of folks took us under their wing, taught us everything. 
And we still have those relationships today, and we're so proud and honor those, um, those relationships and partnerships daily. Um, well, speaking of the property, I know that, you know, obviously the tree. Yeah, we cannot, cannot uh, avoid the tree. That's our icon, our, like our, um, it's, it's who we are. It's our 160-year-old banyan tree. And uh, we built completely around it because we knew what an icon it was and a beacon for the center. Um, it's marked a historical tree, an exceptional tree by the city and county of Honolulu. Um, I love to say to folks who don't know, the same arborist has been caring for it for over 40 years. And I'm like, that's just what a relationship in and of itself. Um, yes. Steve Nims, he's a well-known um, uh, arborist within the community, and we're so lucky that we get to even work with him. Well, and I know initially there was a lot of people with concerns about the tree for for obvious reasons, but mm -hmm. I think the tree is probably flourishing now. Well, if you ask Steve, you know, uh, we see that, and housekeeping sees that. It, it's even actually um, growing at a rate, like before it only had one berry season a year, and now it's having two to three. Wow. Um, and that's the sign of a really healthy, happy tree. And Steve will say that. He's like, this tree's happier than it's ever been. Um, so we're super excited that the tree is just as happy, if not happier. And I think something else important to note is, um, and again, something we're proud of, is that um, hundreds of developments across the globe uh, entered to uh, receive recognition from, from the Urban Land Institute mm -hmm. for their efforts, efforts uh, in development. Um, the Taubin Company, and specifically International Marketplace, did win uh, an award. We were one of 11 uh, for global recognition for all those efforts I mentioned and working with our local partners and just understanding the nuances, both culturally and uh, historically, of the property and of this uh, special place in Waikiki. Um, and so we're so, like, we didn't need the award, but it's so awesome that the ULI um, recognized that as well. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And so, again, it's, it's another like kudos to the Taubman team because yeah. they came in and did it right, right? Yeah, I mean, but it takes, you know, we always say on property, even in our team meetings, you know, it's part of the Ohana. We have this international marketplace Ohana, and it's just such a, you know, we enjoyed working together, and it's such a, a nice thing to know. Other people know how much we enjoyed working together. Great. Yeah. So, you know, I did mention Michael Finley earlier, and um, so let's talk a little bit, because he's well known here for, uh, he came in and did a lot of the footwork and, and developed quite a lot of stuff. So. Let's talk a little bit about the transition and bringing you in and, and where you're at and what your goals are going to be. Yeah, absolutely. So Michael Fenley, like I said, is our former general manager. He's been with the Taubman Company for over 35 years, so he's an industry veteran and expert. Um, so I'm so privileged that he was the one that um, no one else could do it like him. He came here, and this is, I think, his ninth or tenth property that he's worked with with the Taubman Company. Um, and he came in and set us all up for success. Um, so with his leadership and guidance, you know, he moved here well before the property even opened and was here during the construction to kind of, again, learn about the property and all right. the key stakeholders and partners. Um, so he did such a wonderful job. And uh, I had the privilege, of course, of working with him um, as the marketing director. And again, he even took me under his wing and probably more than I ever knew when it was happening, as most often mentors are doing. Mm -hmm. um, and he was one of the folks that um, actually I was at the Waikiki Community Center last year. and. Um, uh, properties were getting recognized for over 40 years of um, business in Waikiki. And our property was chosen, of course, or we have been. And he's like, Brianna, you go up for me. And I'm like, like no, like it's you. And he's like, no, you go. And there I was among all of these, uh, again, industry veterans and whatnot, my, our, his peers. And I stood up there and I was like, you know what? In my head, I was like, I want to put, I want to become a general manager one day. So I told him that after that, and I was also like, "Did you position? Were you positioning me to do that?" <laughs> and he's like, "Maybe." Uh, and then we started telling his boss, who told his, their boss, and it kind of all started last year. Um, and so it's just been a whirlwind of a ride. And, and sure enough, he got a position on the mainland, and so I'm here uh, filling his his shoes, his big shoes, um, and just so honored and, and again privileged that the Taubman Company and this community just welcomed me into this position with open arms. Of course. Yeah. So. Okay, let's let's talk a little bit about the shopping center itself. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have many challenges because you're chasing different market pal. You're you're mm -hmm. chasing the locals as well as the visitors. So let's talk about kind of some of the ways that you're going about doing it. We'll start with the tourist first and see. Well, actually, I'm going to change it. We're okay. going to start we're going to start with Kamaaina first sure. because I think in order if if you can imagine as a visitor they're coming to Hawaii to for Hawaii. You can in, in our industry, you can shop and dine anywhere. True. But what makes what makes our shopping and dining experience authentic? 
Um, and so, and especially our team, we are all Kama Aina. We live here and work here every day. Mm -hmm. So it's also, you know, we, when we look at from a marketing perspective, um, what do we want to do? What do our friends and families want to do? And I think when you start at that kind of foundation, that core, then you can start thinking about the visitor because you're looking at other experiences, you know, aside from shopping and dining. We'll talk about that, I think, later, mm -hmm. the cultural programming mm -hmm. and whatnot. But um, just what else can you do to round out that total experience? And at the end of the day, my goal is that folks leave the property, Kama Aina and visitors alike, mm -hmm. learning a little bit about our, you know, we have Queen Emma, a statue, and uh, like paying nod and homage to the royal family, mm -hmm. um, or just the, like the banyan tree, like just how amazing that is. I just want them all to, you know, leave something feeling a little inspired about Hawaii or Waikiki um, and, and taking that home with them wherever they're going. So what goes into the selection of the, some of the stores, perhaps, and I, I mean to attract locals versus tourists. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think always, well, again, both groups, um, they want something that's made in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, looking at, you know, Hawaii exclusive. Is it um, even, we see some of our big name brands like Fabletics, mm -hmm. they work with local artists to have, you know, custom shirts, but it's still a global brand. Um, so it's so neat. Uh, we encourage that. Our leasing team encourages that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see results with it. And it's also, again, you can have these brands, whether, you know, again, they're like well-known brands, but what makes them different is that when they, I call it localize or kind of add that like local sentiment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really popular within the retail industry. Fabulous. Yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that are new. What are you, what are you doing that's new on site? And then, you know, maybe we'll start with dining. Let's, mm -hmm. let's look at some of the dining and what's going on there. Yeah. Well, I think too, just like as a nod to like everything, there's over a hundred shops and restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, all of them, we have anything from, you know, luxury brands like Rolex, Balenciaga, uh, Tesla. And then we have a lot of moderately priced brands, uh, Fabletics, uh, Shoe Palace, you know, brands like that. And then of course, um, we have local brands as well as like Kula & Co, Eden & Love, um, Martin & MacArthur. So I think when you're looking at international marketplace, there's also this, that same goal uh, is it's, you know, it's a little bit of something for everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of, and it's, you know, it's kind of an adventure or a um, experience when you're even walking through the center mm -hmm. that it's not a typical layout of a, you know, a mall. You kind of, it, um, the layout is developed to replicate a stream that was formerly there. So the, the sh uh, layout of the center is actually in like a stream-like fashion. We want you to like enjoy being there. It's the ambiance, it's the setting. Mm -hmm. um, so as you peruse shops and restaurants, you know, you're kind of, taking a load off again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But for dining, uh, we have our uh, third level Grand Lanai, which is dedicated solely to dining. Of course, we have other restaurants. We have the street on level one. Um, but we just added Kaku's Sushi and Seafood Buffet, mm -hmm. which is a new concept. Again, moderately priced. Uh, it's welcome, great for families. Um, Shorefire opened with us last year. Look good, amazing local food. Mm -hmm. um, flour and barley, strip steak by Chef Michael Mina, Eating House 1849 by Ron Yamaguchi, and Herringbone and Gomate. Um, so again, as you're like, also I'm getting hungry. <laughs> um, you're like, you're like, hmm, where am I gonna go for lunch next? Um, no, but it's just, again, a little bit of something for everyone. Um, and it's just neat to see, um, you know, these new restaurants join us and see how it adds to the overall experience on the Grand Lanai. Great. You know, I think we're getting ready to take a short break here. Um, I'm going to say this is Business in Hawaii, so we'll see you back here shortly. Aloha, my name is Duration. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m., and we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in, and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanneman. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. And with us today is Brianna Grosh of International Marketplace. So, Brianna, we, we kind of finished uh, We started getting close to, and I apologize for that break. It came up a little sudden. But let's finish up a little bit more with the dining and where we left off. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about level three dining, but as I mentioned, there's also um, a concept on level one called the street food hall by Michael Mina. Mm -hmm. um, and what I think is a really fun tip for folks to know is they have something called the party pass. Uh, you, you'll see it soon on your screen, but it's something that you can go up to any of the um, concierge within the within the building or within the restaurant, mm -hmm. and you can purchase this um, party pass where you get to go and try um, like little poo poos or like little small drink samplings mm -hmm. from the stations. Um, so it's kind of a different way to experience dining, but it's it's a fun thing to do. So is it they they ha uh, buy so much and they get a little script and they go to each place? So they give it like a gift work? card mm -hmm. when you get to go around to each station, each station, and you get to use one of the stamps on there. Perfect. So it's like thirty six ninety nine, I think, and um, uh, there's like seven different offerings. So you can just go to any one, or you can use them all at one station. Yeah, that, but again, just that, a fun that, way. And to, the food there is. Pretty good, I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, it's super, super good. Yeah. So okay, so we'll get into now. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the shopping because I know you alluded to some of that. So let's let's talk about some of the newest and greatest. What's going on with yeah, the shopping? Yeah, absolutely. So we um, are opening to me and MCM relatively soon. Um, another ABC stores is coming into the center, um, and it's again just been this um, overall offering of just different, uh, all different mixes of things. Um, and we feel like that is what our customer has been wanting and just catering um, to their needs. Um, so that's been really fun to round out that uh, shopping experience that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about activity? Yeah. Let's, let's talk a little about some of the fun things. Yeah, what, what... that's super important. And like there's even aside from some of the activities, there's what we call customer amenities. So you'll see we have like free shopping mall Wi-Fi. Uh, we also have um, uh, areas where you can sit down and charge your phone for free within the mall. Uh, maybe someone wants to sh sit and sit while someone else is shopping. Um, Those rocking chairs are great. We have rocking chairs by Martin and MacArthur. And we even have a celestial pool that a lot of families will bring their kids to come. You know, the kids are busy, so mom or dad can go and shop. Uh, and so the kids are, you know, entertained. But right, uh, aside from that, we do have a nightly hula show that's free and open to the public. Uh, it's customized and it tells our specific story. So it talks about Tukahanamoku's, the nightclub, the actual, that was a nightclub where Don Ho used to perform. It also talks about Dukan Moku as the surfer, uh, and then uh, talks about Queen Emma, her family, and some of her history as well. So it's, like I said, customized to the center, and it's just a beautiful show. Um, so we encourage everyone to come down and see that, and just, again, learn a little bit about the property. And the tower. The tower, the Lamaku Torch Tower. Yes. Uh, we start the hula show off nightly with a procession. Uh, they come out onto Kalakawa, the, the dancers do, and performers, um, and they, they light it uh, magically. And, uh, and then they proceed to um, they walk through the center to the stage. So it's just a nice way to kind of call out and beckon to Waikiki to come and watch our show. Perfect. Yeah. So, you know, I know you, and I know mm -hmm. that you guys are also, you, you try to reach out to the community and do a lot of things with the community. Uh, why don't you tell us, tell us a little bit more about what you do there? Yeah. Well, personally, um, I'm on a few boards. Um, I'm with with, <laughs> um, with Access Surf. It's a local nonprofit that helps people with disabilities surf and swim. Uh, the YWCA of Oahu, uh, Waikiki Community Center, and the Waikiki um, uh, Improvement Association. So it's just been uh, anything supporting. You know, I'm all about inclusivity personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. I'm also about the Waikiki community. I'm a resident there as well, so I walk to and from work. Um, and so I just want to make sure that everyone in Waikiki is taken care of. And what about as the center itself? Maybe not just. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that I know that you guys do a lot. Of yeah, we things. do a lot. Uh, we annually support the Hawaii uh, Food and Wine Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, we we love to partner with programs that support um, like the next up and coming chef. So we do um, Restaurant Week Hawaii, which is coming up in November. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's just a whole other uh, the Queens Medical Center. We mm -hmm. uh, also support them. Um, there's just a whole bunch of things that we're doing. Um, and there's a job fair coming up. There is a job fair. Um, uh, it's happening this weekend, and we're super excited. Uh, we have 14 uh, merchants that are participating that are looking for wonderful employees. Um, and so we're, uh, it's an annual program or event that we do. Uh, we do four hours of free parking for anyone that interviews with one of our merchants. And more details are available on our website, which is shopinternationalmarketplace.com. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you have an Instagram page too, right? Of course we do. Okay. Yeah, of course. So. 
holiday events. Uh, we're coming up on the holidays, and uh, I know that you guys tend to do a little bit more than the norm. So why don't you tell us about what you got coming up? Yeah, so aside um, from our merchants that have wonderful, you know, Ship Steak puts on a lovely holiday menu. Um, they, I believe they've launched their Thanksgiving menu, so even mm -hmm. if you want to take a look at that, you're, uh, you can. Um, and then we also do uh, Strolling Santa for the holidays on weekends in December. We do a little different thing with Santa and that he, you know, wears his Aloha shirt and he was giving shakas and he's kind of strolling around and interacting in a different way than a typical set. Um, so you can find him um, 4 through 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. again, um, weekends in December. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, just all the all the special offers and sales uh, that the stores are putting on, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we still have quite a bit of time. So let's let's talk about to you, what is it that makes International Marketplace unique? Yeah. What, what sets you apart from, let's say, your competitor? Yeah, I love that every day I get to come to work and I get to share this unique story with our visitors. Um, and that's visitors to the center. Again, that's Kamaina and visitors. Um, it's just, you know, you talked about the banyan tree. There's the hula show. There's just like, I don't know, there's such like the mana of International Marketplace. Like we all feel it, our, our management team and uh, in our merchants, and it's just, again, such a lovely place to, um, again, like peruse and walk through, and um, just the history that's there is so neat and deep. Um, and so, to, again, to be able to tell those stories every day for as a profession is such a privilege and, and so fun. So I hope people, yeah, learn, like I said, learn that and, you know, take, and take pride in that too if they learn it. What are some of the things, now that you're, now that you're in charge, <laughs> uh -oh. And running things. <laughs> is there anything that you'd want to do different, or is there anything that you'd want to? What do you want to expand on? What would you like to put your footprint in? And now that you know you're following through what Michael did, and he yeah. did an excellent job, and like you said, you choose. But you got pretty big shoes there too, Brianna. So, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Um, I think personally, I I I like to lead with heart, lead with aloha. Mm -hmm. I think that's the difference, um, and. I want, um, I, I want everyone, again, especially, I think, again, it starts with our, our own management team, our, our merchants, and the type of customer service we're providing. Mm -hmm. It's I want everyone to feel that sense of aloha when they're coming to the center. Mm -hmm. So we've actually started rolling out programs to help educate and elevate our teams our, through our, um, the customer service we provide and also the edu cultural education of the property. Um, so there's more to come there. But um, at the end of the day, I think there's so much more we can do with, again, understanding the stories from the past. And how do we, what's that modern interpretation of them? I love um, with laymaking, mm -hmm. we work with local uh, laymaker Meliana Estes, and she learned the art of laymaking from her tutu. Um, so it's this, you know, traditional art, um, but she's kind of interpreted into her own modern uh, f and fashion. So I think there's other things we can do, like similarly, with like bringing that past alive to the present, but in this, you know, reimaginative way, which is just, you know, as, as the symbol or the property itself. Uh, has gone through that transformation. So I would, I would tell people to kind of look out for that because we're planning. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, I know one of the shots here, there was a trolley. So mm -hmm. um, why don't you talk a little bit about... Yeah, so last April, we opened up a bus depot, um, and we have wonderful partners that use that daily. And one of them is Waikiki Trolley. And so we, um, while we are a partner on the pink line, you can get off at the pink, uh, the pink line across the street at the International Marketplace stop. Mm -hmm. You can actually also get off and on in center in our bus depot um, and take part in the yellow line, which opened or launched rather this year, and it's the dining line. So it goes down Kapahulu. And so even if you live on Kapahulu, you can like come into Waikiki via this, and it's pretty cheap. And sometimes they even do Kama'aina discount um, for like Halloween or certain holidays. But again, just a fun way to like, like, how do we, you know, we need to get somewhere via transportation or we like to dine. But how do we do these, like, standard practices, like traditional things, a little differently? Um, and I love that this trolley partnership has really, you know, think, think, helps us even think about transportation in a different and new way. So one, one other thing, then, this is just off the cuff because I'm thinking, okay, you're in the middle of Waikiki. What about your neighbors? How do you, how do you work with your neighbors? You, you have hotels all the way around you and... I'm sure that you must have some kind of partnerships or working relationships with some of them too. Yeah, yeah, we love our neighbors in Waikiki, especially since our guests uh, that come to the center, a lot of them are staying there. Mm -hmm. um, so we work in partnership with all of them around us, literally. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, um, while we have great relationships and um, some folks there can get things like your passport to shopping, which is an exclusive shopping and dining package. Uh, the hotels help us put that out. 
Um, it's just, you know, again, we're, we're all representatives of the Waikiki community, so we all have to work together to make sure, you know, our tourists and our visitors, or Kama'aina, are well taken care of. So whether it be offering them, you know, special packages or even the folks that work in Waikiki, Kama'aina discounts, and making sure that our team is getting that information out there to let them know uh, to come down and try some new food or, or shops out. We, we have about two more minutes left. So in closing, is there anything else you'd like to add or share that just? Yeah, I think um, it's, again, just been a whirlwind. And what I love to see is that um, while we always envision Kama'aina coming back to the center, we're seeing even more. We know that they love parking. The parking's accessible and easy off of Kahio Avenue. So even if Kalakau is closed, which it sometimes is, um, it makes it super easy. Like some people call it like Costco parking. Um, I wonder if I can get like if I can get their permission to start branding it that way. Um, big stalls, well lit, whatever. But, but that's hilarious because yeah, it is. It, it is. is. It they're, is. They're nice so, big stalls. So I think I'm just um, our our center did so much to keep the Kama Aina in mind, and I love to hear that feedback that they're coming coming back to Waikiki and even more than we ever imagined. And so I hope that trend continues, and uh, we're doing everything we can to hope it to keep that uh, increasing. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all. That's it. Yeah. Well. Okay, we're, we're running out of time then. And uh, what I want to do is thank you so much, Brianna, because oh, it's you. been a pleasure and I'm glad that you were able to make it today. Thank you everyone else for joining us. Thank you for the great production staff here in the studio. And if you would like to be a guest on the show, please email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. We look forward to seeing you here next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.